Welcome back to Reality Asserts Itself on The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, and we're continuing our series of discussions with actor Gabriel Byrne, who now joins us again in the studio. Paul. Um, you and I have talked about this before. Um, uh, on the, in fact, the first time we ever talked on the phone, you made a comment I thought was, was really important. The explosion of anger and sense of urgency of the Me Too campaign, uh, women and men coming forward about abuse. Um, I know you have a personal connection to that because you know, we didn't talk much about it. We don't need to, but you had personal experience mm -hmm. in, in some of your Catholic teaching mm -hmm. experiences. And as, as big an issue as that is, you said, why isn't there this kind of level of urgency about the climate crisis? Mm -hmm. um, and, and not to diminish how important sure what's happening with, with people being able to come forward and speak, speak out and denounce mm -hmm. people who deserve to be denounced and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, many deserve to be charged and criminally mm -hmm. dealt with. Mm -hmm. All that being said, human civilization as we know it is at stake here and you can't, there's just no sense of urgency in the culture, in the, mm -hmm. the, the corporate media virtually, uh, virtually ignores the issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in the presidential campaign, uh, a, a non-issue, non uh, and, and we're, it, it's not like we're talking end of the century stuff that maybe 10 years ago we thought, okay, there's 75, 100 years. Uh, scientists are telling us that we're going to cross that two degree threshold. The, originally, uh, before the election, they were saying 2050, but now with Trump's presidency undoing mm -hmm. any kind of uh, climate policy, which was already very weak in the United States. Mm -hmm. Who knows the, the, the numbers now? It could be 2040, it could be 2035. And we're all, we're going to be, mm -hmm. even people our age mm -hmm. are likely to live and, and cross that two degree threshold, never mind our kids mm -hmm. that are likely to hit three and four degrees. Mm -hmm. and, and the scientists are saying this is virtually apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. um, hard, hardly a conversation about it. Mm. Well, just going back to something that we, that, that, that we talked about earlier, that um, What's not said is as important as what is said. What's left out of newspaper stories, uh, what's left out of television programs, is really where you start to look around and say, what's not being addressed here? And, you know, you're absolutely right. If we don't get the climate thing sorted out, it doesn't matter who's going to be president or, you know, w what ambitions we have for the future. Um, you know, people are saying that the greatest threat to humanity is artificial intelligence and so on. The greatest threat is, is climate change, full stop. Uh, you would be a fool not to, n not to at least look at that and say, um, let's find out more about this. Now, when the tobacco industry understood that cigarette smoking was really dangerous, it employed public relations guys to come in and say, okay, y you know, our industry is going to collapse if people get to know this. So instead, of, they knew, and the P PR people knew that smoking was lethal. But instead of coming out and saying smoking isn't lethal, they said the best thing to do is to plant doubt. So we get a couple of experts in to say, yeah, well, we acknowledge that, and we acknowledge this, but the, f the, the real results aren't in yet. So what they did was they planted doubt, which was uh, perversely brilliant. It, it, it didn't become an argument about yes or no. It became, well, I don't know. I, and the same policy has been used about climate change. And there are people who are being paid, you know, the equivalent of those guys who were in smoking commercials as doctors saying nine out of 10 doctors smoke camel cigarettes. Uh, looking back on it now, it's ludicrous. But there are people who are employed to specifically um, uh, spread the message that there's a doubt about climate change. So just for people, we, Real News produced a documentary film called Trump, the Koch brothers and their war on climate science, which you can find on our homepage, which tells the whole story of the Koch brothers and others, including Robert Mercer, who was the major backer that helped make Trump president, mm -hmm. uh, put millions and millions of dollars into this attack, not just on the science of climate, but on climate scientists themselves to discredit mm -hmm. them. Uh, well, the, the kind of society we're living in now, uh, 
the kind of mutant capitalism that we're forced to uh, to confront every day, um, it's 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 really myopic in its ambition. Its ambition is to make as much money as possible and damn the consequences of everything. And it becomes about this immediate greed and, and, and a, 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 a disavowal of what may happen down the road. How these people can look into their children's eyes or their grandchildren's eyes and not assume some moral responsibility for this, I, I, I just don't understand it. Or are they people who are saying, well, I'm going to buy a farm in somewhere over there and I'll be okay because I'll have my money and my helicopter and I'll have people to, you know, take care of me. And that's their kind of rationale. And to hell with everybody else. Because capitalism, let's face it, it never cared about, you know, people. Uh, you know, it, 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 it is about profit. And it has always been about profit, and it always will be about profit as long as, uh, as, long it, as it exists in its present form. But I also think on another, on another level, in order for a society to stay um, living, to progress from one level to another. It has to have an inbuilt sense of its own survival. It has to acknowledge that the life force is more powerful than anything. And <coughs> if you look back at the history of you know, powerful civilizations, the, the Phoenicians, the, 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 the Celts, the Romans, the Greeks, all those civilizations died. The dinosaurs died out. Um, but we have, because we're alive now, we have this sense, this life force sense that we are going to live for, that nothing can actually impede our survival. And we haven't realized yet that this thing is so close to us that it threatens the survival, maybe not of you and I, but the survival of our children. It's really hard to look into a child's eyes and say, you know, I am condemning this child to a world that you know, I have not uh, been uh, responsible enough in terms of uh, s spreading, uh, spreading the message. And, you know, people, you know, look at Hollywood films and they say, well, it's just, but if you look at what the content of Hollywood films are, there's, like every single one of them have this huge nemesis that's coming in on civilization. And there's a hero that stands up to them, like in the ancient myths. But this, now it's Superman or Spider-Man or wh whatever. They're all versions of the same thing. A superhero who somehow miraculously stops the evil. That's reflective of the kind of society, in a way, that we live in. Because it transfers the responsibility to the superhero. He will do it. Somebody will sort it out. Not understanding that the real way to stand up to the evil is collective responsibility. And it's particularly interesting, <coughs> the point you're making, because in the back of people's minds is, is capitalism, government. In the end, we'll always, it has to come to its senses about climate. Mm. So somehow it, it's going to deal with it because it's really such a threat. Mm. Um, even before one's eyes, one can see the system completely irrational. I mean, you get a climate denier, elected president, mm -hmm. at a time when the smallest window of actually dealing with the climate, climate crisis is before us. Um, and, and, and the attention of most of the liberal media and most of liberal Hollywood and so on is on the Russians are coming. Yeah. If everything turns out to be true, mm -hmm about Russian interference in the elections. Mm -hmm. It so pales in significance mm -hmm. to the climate crisis. Mm, absolutely. Yet all anyone's talking about is the yeah. Russians, the Russians, and, and then what are they gonna do if it turns out that there isn't actually any evidence of collusion? Because mm -hmm. the, the rationale is gonna be the, the way to defeat Trump is through this mechanism of the collusion with the Russians. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's all about some financial shenanigans, mm -hmm. and yes, some people get exposed. Mm -hmm. And maybe even Trump is embroiled in some of these mm -hmm. financial mm -hmm. shenanigans. I mean, the, the most likely scenario here is worst case scenario, probably Trump doesn't run again in 2020, mm -hmm. and you get an even more dangerous climate denier in Pence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the lack of focus on this mm -hmm. issue, it, it boggles my mind that mm -hmm. people who are informed, mm -hmm. who at least say they believe the science, mm -hmm. 
and then prioritize it number 14 on their list of things that they, that they, they speak and get passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, again, it goes back to, I think, uh, what's not, like, in my opinion, the headlines every day should be about climate change. Yeah. And they should be in every single newspaper, and they should, it should be on television uh, day after day, day, after after day. day after day. Um, we also have, as human beings, I think, an innate tendency like Rip Van Winkle, to sit under the tree and go to sleep, and that when you wake up, you hope everything's going to be okay again. But that's an abdication, in my opinion, of uh, personal and collective, uh, collective responsibility. There's a two-party system here, as there is in Britain, as there is in Ireland, as, and um, there is no sense of um, uh, th that issue being of any importance. I was waiting for it in the, uh, you know, in the election run-up. But it's you got seemed... more of it from Sanders. Yes. And 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 I understand the dilemma, and we're, you know, trying to deal with it too. You do. You got to talk about the things of immediate, in, mm. uh, uh, where people are suffering from unemployment sure, and, sure. and so on. Sure. But but it's not. But all... How do you not also raise climate as a as a number? top tier issue? Because the people in the top tier, those 0, 0 0.1% uh, of the people who control almost everything, I mean, you could have a discussion about whether we live in a democracy or a corporatocracy. You could have a discussion about that and who really runs the country. But it's a combination of many things. And I, I've worked in the film and theatre business for a long time, and I kind of see how that plays into a central, uh, a central narrative. It would be very difficult to make a film in Hollywood about climate change, uh, a fictional film. Uh, but on the other hand, the, the confluence of a celebrity culture and a culture that is addicted to soap opera meets politics. And what's going on at the moment now is a huge soap opera with a, uh, a political equivalent of J.R. I don't know if you remember watching Dynasty Bar or whatever yeah. that thing was called. Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Everybody was saying, now, I wonder what J.R. is going to do this yeah. week. We are all involved, and, the, and, and television, and media, involved in a huge soap opera that gets its hits from negative negative reaction all the time. It's I like an addiction. Say, uh, one of the, MSNBC has been terrible, and CS, CNN, I think, has even been worse. It's well, just, they, because they're just making so much money out of this soap opera. Yes. And well, there seems to be no other agenda. They have to also admit, somewhere along the line, that they were complicit, you know, much as they hammer Trump in the election of Trump. Because when the, when, when the uh, statistics came out, there was, mu there was I think it was 80% Trump and 15% Bernie Sanders. Had that been reversed, we might be looking at a totally different world. Mm. But they knew they were selling huge, huge, like Les Moonves of CBS famously said, you know, Donald Trump may be bad for America, but he's great for CBS. And that is exactly what it was. MSNBC, CNN, they helped to perpetuate the, the cycle of um, avoidance and ignorance and denial that's going on at the moment. But, you know, news anchors breaking down in tears because somebody said something about somebody they should be breaking down in tears about the world we're living in. But you see, the thing is, CNN, MSNBC, CB, all these people have a political agenda. You're not going to get to be an editor of one of those stations if you think differently, and you're certainly not going to be a reporter. So what you have to do is you have to toe the, you have to toe the line of the status quo, and you, you, try, you try not doing that and see how far, see how far you get. So... Um, those corporations which are in charge of the dissemination of knowledge have an agenda, and the agenda is very narrow and it does not include climate change. But I think that um, in some way, um, rather than waiting for the newspapers to do it or television or whatever, we have to look at our families. We have to look at the people that we really love and care about, and we have to say, what kind of a world do we want these children to inherit? Because um, it does boil down to personal, collective uh, re responsibility. I don't want my children to be living in a world where cities are swamped with water. What can I do? And yet at the same time, it seems like an overwhelming thing. But as Margaret Mead said, that the feminist said, you know, 
Every great movement begins with a discussion between two people. Even discussing it is a political act. Even sitting in a restaurant or a bar and saying, what do you think about climate change? What's your feeling about that? And how is that connected to the system that we live under? And is poverty and, you know, uh, uh, climate and uh, repression and uh, foreign policy, how are they all connected? It's, it's kind of ridiculous that going on television for an actor getting interviewed on a late night show or something, mm would think it would be some risk to raise the issue of climate. Yeah. But if you talk about responsibility, I mean, people that have access to public platforms, every damn time they need to work this into the conversation. Because corporate media isn't going to do it. Uh, and and th well, like, there shouldn't media. be a media, there shouldn't be an interview someone does without talking about the urgency of the situation. But those late night shows are not geared to, the, 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 those corporations do not want people on late night chat shows talking about climate change or anything uh, serious. Yeah. These are entertainment things. Yet at the same time, okay, Stephen Colbert and people like that, they pass off as kind of commentators, on the, but it's more Trump stuff. Um, and I think that if you, if you look at somebody like George Bush, who some people have called a war criminal. Um, he is. And he was a man who reconfigured uh, to, to, to an appalling extent the, the politics of the, uh, of the Middle East, made, made gigantic uh, human uh, suffering happen, and as a result, it's still happening. That guy is on late night chat shows. Being, re you know, being related to as a folksy old grandfather who paints really bad uh, paintings and is talking about, you know, who's coming out to criticize Trump, saying he's a blowhard and so forth. And people are saying, yeah, but you know, George Bush wasn't so bad, you know. He was a guy who, whatever, our ability to forget, our ability to want to go to sleep, our ability to want to, to, to have somebody else solve it for us is, you know, it's part of the human condition and we have to fight against that. And just by having a talk with your kid and by saying to them, you know, you got to tell your friends about this, you got to ask your teacher about this. And teachers, you know, are teachers, nurses, firemen, the people who are the true heroes of, you know, the, you know, the, not basketball players or film stars or singers or rap singers. They're not the real heroes. The real heroes are the people who keep the things going on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so the, the next thing question I'm going to ask is, is, is going to sound se a little self-serving, being real news self-serving, and it's going to sound that way, well, partly because it is. But I think it's also pertinent and interesting. Like, why are you in Baltimore? Because we talked on the phone, you were watching the real news, mm. and we talked about this, we want to create this climate crisis bureau mm -hmm. where we do daily news about the urgency, what solutions look like, and really get it to scale. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe talk about why that struck a nerve with you. Well, I think one of the most important things on this website is no corporate funding. When you see that, you think, okay, these people are not taking money from anybody, so they don't have a, a, a loyalty or a, a, a need to please anybody. And it is what it says. It's the real news. And the word real has even more of a, a, a powerful connotation in, in the last year or so with the rise of so-called fake news. But... Um, 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 a television program that attempts to tell the unvarnished truth, not just about what's going on here, but has, uh, shines a light on uh, what's going around the rest of the world. Because going back to what I said about coming to America for the first time, and I think America is an amazing country, and I'm not anti-American at all, just like I'm not anti-British. But um, the, the idea that I found strange was that America, for all its huge uh, uh, size, was actually a very isolated and introverted country in terms of the knowledge of uh, uh, outside influence and what was let in and what was absorbed here. And so you tend to have, like, 
the world in a vacuum and what happens outside the world. One of the great things on, 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 this, on, on this channel is you do get to see what's happened in Iceland or Venezuela or South Africa, or whatever. It's opening up people's minds. And anything that opens up people's minds to think about the rest of the world or to think about the guy who lives down the road in a different way is something that deserves huge support. Because what's the agenda here? The agenda is to tell the truth. It's to be real. The agenda isn't to say, OK, well, we can sell more advertising space if we keep talking about Russia and Trump. Um, you are passionate about climate change because you realize the, the immediate um, um, need to, you know, to confront it. And it's confronting it. It's not, it's not just having an opinion about it. You have to confront it. How do we confront it? Even having a conversation like this, if somebody says, well, I'm going to talk to my kid or the guy next door, that in itself is something that we are, you know, we can all do. And if, if we kind of unplug ourselves from this negative soap opera that we're all addicted to, which is how brilliantly the mainstream corporate media works. If you ever notice when there's a, when there's a, um, some kind of a major uh, event, the headlines and the music will make it look like it's a movie. A lot of people, when they saw 9-11 on television, without knowing what was going on, thought it was a clip from a film. So the media understands very well how drama works. It understands it so well. It understands when to break. Um, it understands back after this. Is America in danger? Will the terrorists come here? Back after this. Should we be on code orange? Back after this. And you're going, oh my God, code orange, code red. The Russians, uh, you know, they're all bogeymen to distract you from the real bogeyman, which is climate change. All right. Mm. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Paul. Um, I think this is just the beginning of a conversation with Gabriel. Um, I'm going to ask him on camera, and I, that way he can't say no, uh, to come back, and uh, we'll go live. And we'll take viewer questions and, uh, and do a, another session. Does that sound okay? Thank you, Paul. Cool. Uh, thanks for joining us, and thank you. And thank you for joining us on Reality Asserts Itself on the Real News Network.